In the title editor, I'm able to change the font, point size, and color attributes and add shadows if I want to create a look that will accent my project design. I'll demonstrate how I do this and how to save time by creating and saving settings as looks in the title editor. So for formatting on the boxes here. All right, with my points in here, if I want to go in here and make a change to the font itself, sometimes I will capitalize a letter and treat it like a drop cap. I can go in there and do that. This would be the time to do that. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the color. Now I'm going to go over here to the face. All right now it's white. Let's change that to a green. And I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And you'll see that the color shows up. If I wanted to make this stand out, I would select part of the text to 98%. You can go over here to the face. Go to lighter color. And there's that. Right now, it doesn't look like anything. It's really, really small on the screen. And I can do that with each one of the lines. I can, I can set the text colors. When I'm setting each line independently, what I'll do is go ahead and click the box and then double click in it and select them all because I've learned that if I don't do that, the previous color can get picked up and carried over and reverse the color up. All kinds of strange things have happened. So here I want to go ahead and change this face color. It's green. Maybe an orange would work there. And two factors with the color is going to be the font size and the size of the screen. Now, if I wanted to increase the size on these, I can go ahead and select those. And I can use the little button here to increase that size. So that's a 28. Because of this line here, I'm going to drop it back down to 26. Different presentations, different sizes, but I already had the initial size set up. So any changes that I make are going to be a lot easier. Now setting the colors is tedious because in each one of these I'm going in and I'm setting those colors. But to make changing the colors easier, what I can do is I can go into a text box, select everything. Come over here if I'm just changing the face, and I can go ahead and select a color. Now what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to take a note of these RGB colors. 92, 226, 224. I have a text document where I have these values. So I pick out the colors that I want. And once I've picked out these colors, I'm going to apply that. And then I'm going to come up here where the look settings, it says default. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I'm going to call this demo two. And what that did for me is, let's say I go down here to this line. and I select it, I can go to my looks, and now 103 Demo 2 is right here. Instead of going over here and fiddling with the colors and everything, I now have the color I want, and I can just apply it. Just click it. It makes it really easy. And you can see here in my looks that I've done that. I have saved a number of colors that I use for different purposes. So that saves a lot of time. I will put a link in the description for the video about the W3 Schools color picker. There's a color wheel you can go in and you can dial up the colors you want and you can get the RGB values. I would suggest creating a file or something and just recording those. Now, if I wanted to do something like give some of these a shadow, Shadows are good to use when you want relief in there. 
And there's two ways to do that. They have templates here with shadows. And I can select any of these. It really doesn't matter. I usually just hit this one. And then I can customize that by coming over here to the face. And I can change that if I wanted to. I'm going to leave it where it is. But since this is a shadow, they've already applied an orange shadow. And I don't want an orange shadow. Even with a dark background, I want a dark shadow. It just provides some more relief. So I'm going to come over here, pull that down, and I'm going to apply it. After applying a shadow, what I do is I go to the size. With my presentations, I know that I like a 108. It shows up good on the screen, and it looks okay. If I wanted to save this as a look, I could save it. I'm going to try to give it a name here. <laughs> it may not be readable, whatever. So now I've saved that. So if I wanted to go up here and change this one and give it that shadow, I could go to my looks. And here's the shadow that I just created. And I could have different colors and different things and different shadow colors. So that would be a good way to do that. So now I've got my fonts formatted. I have colors. I have shadows. I've saved the settings as looks. Okay, if I wanted to reset this, maybe I decide that I want the fonts to all look the same. I want them to all be white again or black or whatever color. I can come over here to the text box list and I can click and then I can either shift click to select them all or I can control click and designate which ones I want to do. So you can get some text effects there, alternate colors, do whatever. And once those are selected, you can go to the looks, apply those. You can do it manually over here in the look settings. I mean, it's, it's easy to do at that point. Working with text boxes inside Studio's title editor can be challenging, especially if there aren't any graphics or other landmarks to provide points of reference. In this video, I'll show how to use the alignment tools inside Studio and how I made a grid.